We're here at the USA Science and Engineering Festival. I'm sitting with Jeff Lieberman, and Jeff is an artist and an engineer all wrapped into one. And Jeff, tell us a little bit about your educational background. Specifically, as a teenager, how did you decide on kind of the, the, the path that your life has taken? I think as more time goes by, I realize I didn't decide any of it. It decided me, and I, I slowly have learned to go along with those decisions instead of fighting them at all. Um, I was just always really interested in math, always really interested in science. You know, I was, I, my earliest memories of this were being nine years old, coming home from class in third grade and trying to make up math theories about how to add numbers really quickly, like these old Gaussian stories of adding one to a thousand really quickly, things like this. For some reason, I was just pulled into that world. I wanted to understand these patterns. And I just followed that, you know. And similarly, I was playing drums when I was six and saxophone and piano later on. And, that was the second world where I was doing music a lot. And now I understand really deeply how music and math are related Absolutely. and engineering and all of this, but it wasn't clear to me at all. It seemed like these were two separate worlds. And so, you know, I was drawn towards both of them and there were obviously environments in high school to do both of those things and in college as well. Uh, but there was really no overlap until I ended up at the Media Lab. Hmm. It's interesting that you mentioned the, the, the link between music and engineering, music and math. And it seems like you know, using this creative process that you've clearly embraced and, and really excelled at, how is finding patterns and finding that kind of interrelationship between different disciplines, why is that so important for students to understand and embrace? Well, that's a deep question. Um, <laughs> pretty much everything that you ever perceive is a pattern. You know, when we're born, we don't have our senses differentiated. We don't even really know what it is to, to be an infant and have this newborn experience because their senses of sight and sound and taste and touch and smell are not differentiated yet in their neurons. So they're having some kind of singular experience of life that's happening. They have no idea that they're a separate body in an environment, all these really basic things we take for granted. And all of the way that your perception works is by having memories of certain patterns that have come up before and detecting them again. And so I see you and I don't see this totally unknown thing. I see a, a layout of eyes and ears and a face and all this sort of thing. And I know you're a human being without having to consciously put that together, right? These are things that have been built up because I've seen millions of examples. Mm -hmm. And the whole way that we actually construct our world is through these kind of repetitive patterns through time. You know, note everything from color. There are cultures that don't have words for more than three colors and they can't tell the difference between more than three colors. And you show them the sky and the grass and a red thing and they think the red thing is green and they call it green because they don't have the memory patterns of calling those things differentiated before. These things go amazingly deep, you know, and when you, when you study perception, you start to realize that all of those things, even things that you take so fundamentally for granted, like, like color, like this is a red shirt, don't exist in the outside objective world. There's no red in the outside objective world. There's certain frequencies of light that bounce off of this shirt and those are just speeds of vibration, but once they go into your eye and into a visual cortex that has memory of similar vibrations, the creation of red happens. And so you might see this how I see green. Another animal might see this is invisible. We know that to be true. So all of these things are interpretations. All of our attitudes about the way we see everything are really, really deep-seated interpretations about the world that we usually hold on to as if they're factual. Absolutely. I'm speaking with Jeff Lieberman. Uh, he is an artist and an engineer. We're at the USA Science and Engineering Festival. And you can learn more about what Jeff has to say on engineering.com.